Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Tao for organizing this uh, wonderful conference and uh, especially on the uh, intelligent wearable electronics and devices. And I have the great honor and pleasure to give a presentation here to talk about our inventions as well as its possible applications to wearable electronics. And today I'll mainly cover the technology side of this invention. Then I will dig into two fundamental scientific questions, which will be interesting for the quantification of the signals and the future applications. So this invention was basically around 2011, 10 years ago, when we first started the how to convert the tiny mechanical energy into electric power. As you can see that traditional technology that rely on the electromagnetic induction, which give you a lower voltage output if the option frequency is low. However, for the TNG, trouble electric nanogenerator, it used the contact amplification. The movement of the medium results in a higher output voltage, which is independent on the sliding frequency. So in other words, starting at low frequency, high frequency, the output voltage is the same except the current. So you can see this technology has the advantage. has the advantage to turn slow motion into effective electric power. Therefore, at low operation frequency, it has an unbeatable advantage uh, than the electromagnetic generator, which is only op good for higher frequency. For low frequency, especially frequency available for human activity, TNG is much more effective than the EMG. So that's why we are very interested this one for wearable electronics and affordable electronics. And uh, that's the core of the invention. So in the last 10 years, this, there's a lot of work has been done on this regard. Around the global, there's around 10,000 scientists distributed across 64 countries and regions who are engaged in this research. So therefore, there's a mainly for its application in the micro nano energy system for wearable electronics, same time as sensors. It's a sensor that can co convert any mechanical trigger into electric signal. And lastly, it has many applications for harvesting water wave energy, so-called blue energy, which is a possible way for substitution fossil energy in the future. So therefore, you can see there's a broad application. Today, my talk is mainly around wearable electronics. If you look at the roadmap for the TNG, it's mainly in four areas. One is small power. The second one is sensors. The third one is blue energy. And last one is has high voltage sources. And it have different stages. We are in the design innovation stage device performance stage, as well as system and prototype, as well industrialization here. And uh, as we are speaking right now, there's a number of technology being applied to industry, which use TNG technology. So that's why this field has been so much attractive to many scientists around the world. Okay, so let's give you a brief review of the current application of TNG. So let's look at particularly today for this conference, application of flexible TNG for intelligent sensing as well as portable electronics. And I know there's a large group of scientists who are very much expert in fabric based materials. You know, fabric based material is a wonderful material for many purposes. Uh, among these fibers, the trouble electrification between the two is one of the most common characteristic. That means two fiber, one contact the other one, you mm. definitely have electrostatic charge built mm. on the surfaces. If you use the mechanical mm. tricking, change the gap distance between two fibers, then you results a voltage drop across two, which drive the electron flow to rebalance the field. 
So we have this contact separation operation, and as a result, we do see a signal. So if you make this in, into a uh, twisting structure here, so if you count a specific area, you do see a signal output. And this use the structure design and the working mechanism of PNG, okay? So this is use, uh, uh, this is fiber-based materials. Then the other one, fiber-based material is not just a single fiber, it's a coaxial fiber. So coaxial fiber, you have a core, you have a shell, and you have a gap. So if you twist the, the, the shell one against the other one, you do have physical contact. You have electrostatic charge on this. And this electrostatic charge give you what? Give you a, a, a voltage drop across these two layers. And this can make it into a single fiber and it's a sensor and it's power source. So if you make with any uh, uh, functional materials, you can build a, a functional fibers which is there were several paper report, the functional fibers use this technology. You can measure the output voltage as a functional frequency. You, you stretch this fiber. You can see the output frequency is truly, uh, uh, the voltage is an independent frequency, but the current, it does. The reason because the current depends the rate at which you change this uh, fiber. So this single fiber can be applied for a number of Purpose, for example, if you put in a, in, in, in a jacked a person play golf, they can be a uh, 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 different swing, different actions. You give a signal, so you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Caress one, two, three, four, five, six. The different actions give you the signal here. Not on the, only the amplitude of signal, but also the shape of the signal as well as the other. Uh, uh, features of signal can give you quantitative description how this person handled the golf uh, uh, club here. Okay, so therefore this is give you a way of use body motion to, to 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 serve as a sensor as well as a power source. Okay, uh, one of the popular most important material is fibers. This is two fibers. If you intertwist the fibers and the contact separation between two fibers give you electric output. And this, you can make a rug. The rug is basically like a power source. And if you make it into segmentation on the, on, on the rug, you can set different parts correspond to different sensors here. So this gives you any materials you, you, you choose. Can be fabricated materials, can be polymer materials, can be other functional fiber materials, anything, you, you name it, even papers can make it into a functional device. So the TNG is do serve as a, one of the fundamental technology that convert the mechanical tricking of general materials into a power source or sensors here. So which can integrate with our existing uh, fabric, okay? Then the other ones ship adaptable and highly resilient. They can make this, uh, our people be make these fibers into resilient so that uh, will bounce back, uh, it's automatically. So you compress it and have a contact between two fibers. If you release it, it's, it's bounced back. In such, you'll be able to track a motion trajectory of a person across a rock. In this case, this can be put in anywhere on, on, on the wall, on the floor, and be a detection system here. So if you want an intelligent, this do serve as one of the a system for the uh, intelligent wearable electronics. Again, these materials are the most frequent materials we utilize for fabric. Then the other one is so power electronic skin. You make an electronic skin that not only can detect the signal because that you step on, but also can detect it for blood vessel monitoring, heart beating, any physical, logical trigger, muscle motion, be able to give you a a, a, a signal here. So such a signal is important for physiological monitoring as well as heart uh, uh, monitoring as well as uh, the, the Chinese medication here. So this is one of the way we made this TNG use to utilize the materials you are most familiar with be achieve this functionality, okay? Then this is one truly make this little, uh, uh, T-shirt type of thing, but it's contact body and any kind of intertwisting between the fibers here, be able to measure 
the local heartbeat and behavior as well muscle motion here. So this is why you can make a, a, a elastic, uh, this uh, uh, T-shirt, the contact to our body, be able to measure physiological signals here. We demonstrate this one and it shows great potential to be used for spots, for uh, health monitoring of a general elder person utilize use fabric. So, so again, this the fundamental principle is the one fiber kind of the other one, the trouble electricity give you a signal here. And we use this one to measure the uh, uh, signal from a human body in compared to ECG so that we can compare, see how good we can achieve uh, use this physiological measurement as well. Of course, if you make this one be monitored, the heartbeat being behavior is truly a wearable, uh, a carryable and portable compared to the, some of the expensive equipment, which most time only available in the hospital, we can make a cost effective, high sensitive uh, ECG like uh, system for health monitor. So this is, again, we utilize the fabric materials for wearable electronics. Okay, so you can see this, this is the, uh, the compare experiment. Yeah. The other one is that you'll be able to make a, a touch sensors, uh, a security sensor. Anything you touch, you contact, you'll be able to give a signal. You'll be able to give a signal. And this signal give you, oops, this signal give you, you touch two points, one point, all the output signal is sufficient, large enough for directly data process without the uh, amplification. So this is, I think, is another big advantage for that. If you talk about the material utilize, I said we can literally use any material we want to be, but paper is based, is one of the best materials, the cheapest material we, we can have. So you can make a, a two, two layer of paper, one have a hole punched and the other sort of, all this one can be uh, utilized for this hole punching, uh, the Sony wave tricking. You can, change the pattern design here and tune the frequency response as well as amplitude. This is not only a, a power source, but also sensor. So you make a, make a wallpaper. This wallpaper can be a power source, also can be a sensor. So therefore in the future, you never know where you can have a microphone located in your room, which is basically a piece of art on the wall, right? So this use trouble electrification effect to make it. And this is the one that make use paper based make a hearing aid. So you can change the design pattern here. You can tune the frequency at which the device responds. So you can play a which to, to select. We can easily respond to, to frequency a few uh, thousand Hertz, okay? In such a case, you can record it. Let's say if you can hear the voice. Right? Can you hear the voice? Music. Can you hear the music or no? Okay, I hope you can hear. This is a recording. They can record the music, then play it back. It's okay. Now it's a recording. Now if we play it back, you can hear. They preserve 90% of the quality of the sounds. It can also be a microphone for communication between a person and a robotic. So this is basically for human machine interface voice recognition. So you can see all TNG can be a microphone, and this microphone can recognize the voice and integrates machine learning. So this is again show you we do have an advanced use of whatever the available materials for your purposes here. Okay, so this is the example. Then if you, another one is documentation management. If you have, go to the library, you have thousands of millions of volumes of books, but management such one is difficult. Okay, now that you'll be able to, if you want to track the position of each book, or each document is difficult because the battery will not last very long. So what you do is that you make a TNG in a book. If you touch this TNG, that the signal automatically sent out, while the signal and directly received by the receiver here, you can identify which book at what time being moved. You can see this. Document one move. 
and then you move the other one tongue too. So all this one does not need external power. Is the power is the signal it generated by itself. As you see, this small movement here to radi radiate uh, a small electromagnetic wave, which is being detected by the receiver. And you also can do this one for line recognition, text recognition, which also depends on it. Okay. And also you can be you for for keyboard. You can use a keyboard for input uh, signals here. So we may, we do make a smart keyboard that can recognize the, a person typing. Even for soft robotic, it can be a seven. This software can grab different things and make uh, a different materials as you wish here. Okay. So therefore, this is the one we have been utilizing for such purposes. Okay. Now is that you have a robotics here. The robotics is very much sensitive to the, the ro rotation here. So we make a, a, a angle sensor, an angle sensor. The sensitivity is nano radiance, 10 to minus ninth radiance. So therefore can be controlled robotic for handwriting and give you signal. So all this one, be able to very much for robotics application for wearable purposes as well as control. So you can see the broad application, real broad, and to anything we are interested in today from small powers, small electronics here. And you can paper based ones, and this is the paper folding, you'll be able to make a, a, a self powered sensors to monitor the paper folding to according to the, 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 the action you are taking. So, therefore, this is a uh, universal effect, diverse choice materials, and a broad application. So if you look at the application here, we do show that we can be a power source, a cell power sensors. We can also be comfort functions, a self-charging integration, and scale of manufacturing. So we do have a lot of opportunity for application here. So therefore, we do have a lot of opportunity for commercialization in the future. We hope one day a lot of people can use this one for health monitoring, for for security purposes, as well as environmental protection. So we do have a big hope for this one. And uh, we hope that uh, you can be part of this whole uh, team who do uh, uh, this kind of uh, exploration. So all what I show you so far are the potential technology side related foldable fiber-based materials for, for wearable electronics. I'd like to touch two bases with you two fundamental science questions here. A lot of cases we do technology, we could forget about the technology part, uh, a science part. One part is the mechanism of contact electrification. We know this for a very long time, but the mechanism is unknown until recently. Contact electrification happens for solid and solid, liquid and solid. So it's universal. And we do find that, let's look at the case is first one is the solid and the solid case here. So if you have a metal tip sliding on the dielectric surface, you can leave a charge on the surface here. Use Kevin probe, you can measure it. And now is this kind of the charge separation is due to electron transfer, ion transfer, or material species transfer. It has to be debated for many years. You see a very universal effect but the mechanism is debating. So we use a metal tip contact a dielectric. If this is the surface state of dielectric, we metal contact with the dielectric can transfer charge to the dielectric. And this gives you a charge transfer to the dielectric. If you apply a negative bias, further raise the Fermi level of metal, more electron kick into dielectric. That's what you see here. And this, if you have a positive bias, it's lower the, uh, the, the Fermi level so low the electron from the dielectric can flow back like here. That's what you see. So therefore, this proof it is electron transfer occurs. If you have a two dielectric, one dielectric and the dielectric, to make a contact, how does a charge transfer occurs like this? We do find two surface model, surface states model can explain some of the case here. So you can have electron transfer to the other side. And if you separate, the electron remains here. And if you heat up to some temperature, Again, thermionic emission here. So all this is a dielectric with dielectric contact electrification here. Okay. And this 
Then the question is how close the tip has to be to the dielectric before the charge transfer occurs, okay? So then you say, is a tip contact the dielectric, you become a, a, a contact like this. In such a case that we find that only when a tip is so close to the surface, how close in a repulse region, in a repulse region, in a repulse region that uh, produce a voltage output here. Then what's the repulse region? It means if you have two interatomic uh, bonding and this equilibrium position, that means the interaction force is equilibrium. But here is that if you press, make this bonding distance shorter than non-bonding in a compressed region, that means the overlap wave function or electrical cloud give you the charge transfer here. So therefore, this is the, if you compress one against the other one, you do have the charge transfer occurs and which give you the signal you see here. So this proves do electron transfer occurs, which only happens when the two atoms have a strong electrical cloud overlap. So therefore, we propose a more generic model. You have a E elements of E materials, B elements of B materials. If they're too separate too far, they cannot have charge transfer. But if you push one against the other one, you do have charge transfer because the barrier height is reduced. Why? You do have this barrier height change is because you have a strong electron cloud overlap if you want to compress one against the other one. So therefore, the lower the barrier make possible the electron transfer from one to the other one. So this is the case we do this. We see, for, for, the, for example, you do have the charge transfer from here to here. And if you have the charge transfer like this, the charge remains here. If you separate it, then the charge will be thermionically emitted, give you, that's why you cannot preserve for a long time. So this is for the solid, solid. So this model, since we propose, is widely accepted for use electron model, transfer model to explain the contact purification. Then the second case is semiconductor. We find something very unusual. If you have a semiconductor, if you have a p-type semiconductor and n semiconductor solid one on top of the other one, then you have a metal contact on two end. You measure the current flow across load. If you slide this back and forth, when you slide back and forth, you do find you have the DC current. You can see the DC current. This is very different because the AC current is the charge flow back and forth the external load. But you have a DC current, that means must go like that. Similar to like a photovoltaic. So we find this is a new effect called trouble voltaic effect. So what is trouble voltaic effect? So if you slide the N top semiconductor on the top of P top semiconductor, in a region that break the bonds, you need the input energy. That's why you need to slide it hard, get break the bond. But in a newly formed area, you form the bond that give you release the energy. You form a bond. So the, the amount of energy release is called a binding energy. This binding energy we call binding time. This binding energy happens right, release right at the PN junction here, which excite the electron hole pairs. Electron be separated by the, the PN junction goes to this side, the hole separate by to the other side. So you do have the trouble voltage effect separated by the PN junction which give you the charge separation like that, okay? So this is the case called trouble voltaic effect. Trouble voltaic effect give you all the, 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 the new phase of this one. This new effect, the theory experiment has to be further verified as well, uh, established as well, okay? Then we, we verify this one to nanoscale. So we use a scanning tip, use a scanning diamond tip on the P and N type uh, silicon we do opposite of the trouble voltage effect. Verify it's very much universal in many systems we know. So therefore, DC current can be generated by photon. DC current can also generate by the trouble electrification contact process, which is new. So therefore, if you slide this back and forth, you do have a DC current output, which is a new mechanism for power generation as well as sensors here. So this is, a, a, we, we have started this one. For water, a liquid, same thing, okay? As you see, if you have water flow out of the pipe, if you have a uh, rub the, the, the bottle, the bottle attract the water, that means the water is charged. So what happens to the liquid and solid contact purification? 
So we know that for a long time, we know, okay, this you have a solid, you have a layer of iron soap on the surfaces, and this layer of iron make a, a anion cation distribute in liquid from an electric double layer. So we know that from chemistry and very important mechanism for electrochemistry as well as electric engineering, uh, no, a chemical engineering. So therefore, we all questions that are all these ions, why? How do, where do they come from? So we do an exp experiment or such. If we have a silicon dioxide surface, we put a drop of DI water on the surface. Then let the water dry. Then we may use Kevin Pro measure the charge transfer from a droplet to the, to the uh, solid. We found is minus 800 microcoulomb per meter square. So that do have charge exchange between two. And then you have the surface, solid surface. You, if you remain in room temperature for a long time, the charge remain there for a very long time. Now, if you heat the sample at a 393 Kelvin, the charge decays like that. You repeat the experiment, dry the liquid, reheat again at 473 Kelvin, it dries very quickly like that. You see, it decays, does not reach to zero, it reaches to minus 180 microcoulomb per meter square. This tendency here, limit, is the ions of a subnormal surface. All this being emitted are the electrons. So it means that for the first droplet that contact this solid, a small percentage of ion absorption and large percent of electron transfer. So therefore, we, we repeat this experiment on same area, the second droplet, you get the charge density about minus 100, 830. Then you heat up the more ion absorption surface. The third droplet, the fourth droplet, until the fifth droplet, it reach more like saturation. That's the ion build up on the surface. So if you do not heat up to a high temperature, if you only look at the very beginning, you have both charge on the surface. You have the ions, you have electrons here. So this fundamental change, some of the understanding about the dynamics of electric double layers. We repeat this experiment for different pH values, different materials, we'll find a consistent pattern. We do find that you have partial electron transfer and ion transfer. So we have a mixture, but this mixture, the ratio of electron transfer and ion transfer depends on the material itself and also depends on the contact angle. So you can see this one, this is magnesium oxide, silicon nitride, titanium oxide, and aluminum, all this is possible. Many materials can test for that. So both chemical options, physical options are possible, all right? The question now is a question. So you have water molecule. How come water molecule lose one electron become water ion? Is this possible? Used to be, we think this was impossible, but now it's possible. The reason water molecule become water ion is possible. The only is the water ion, the lifetime is very short. So water ion and water molecule combined together forms two radicals. And these radicals are the one you form from the system here. So water ions and water molecules from the radicals, and this radical can participate in the, the degradation of pollutions in a, in a liquid. We have to verify that. Furthermore, uh, here I just show you, there's electron transfer that occurs between liquid and solid. There's other process that can be reviewed by this time resolved X-ray absorption spectroscopy shows the, that do have this, this process possible. So this can expand and we, a revision of electric double layers. So you have a virgin surface, and then you put a, a drop of water on that. At the very beginning, you have both electron transfer and ion transfer. And if you reach an equilibrium, you have this inter-electron distribution, inter-ion distribution. Even the density of both can be quantitatively measured. So our technology provides a way you can quantify the charge transfer and interface your single electron. Uh, single electrode TNG. So this provides new tool for, for fundamental chemistry study for that. We can expand 
uh, repeat this experiment on the polymer surface, one droplet, droplet of uh, ions. You can repeat for many droplets on the same area, you can see the surface charge build up. In each droplet, you can see the, the charges transfer to the solid. And the, when the liquid left, you have carried certain charge, but this amount left on the surface. So you can repeat this experiment, uh, use that to show that liquid and uh, solid countertrification is a universal effect. It can happen if it happens for a uh, droplet at the very beginning and at the middle, you have a closed saturation and rich saturation on this one, all right? So this is the case that uh, we have this one to the, 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 the charge transfer in the liquid and solid case here. And then you do have this ion absorption and the different ion absorption model for electric double layers. But now we know beside, beside the electron uh, ion absorption, you have electron transfer. So this gives you new understanding by electric double layers. We hope this one can help you us to understand some of the phenomena we were unable to understand based on original model. So you can see this fundamental study can provide some interesting about the chemistry. Okay, you see this one, uh, Professor Wang Zhuang Kai and a collab with us to for our generation. And this was the first paper in 2014, almost 10 years ago. This paper. Then uh, a couple of years ago, Wang Zhuang Kai's group published this paper, shows that liquid, a single drop that can give you a large output. That was a recent paper from. Uh, uh, city of Hong Kong that showed this can be scaled up. So therefore, study fundamentally can guide you new technology advance here. So this is the first things I, fundamental thing I show you, show you the uh, contact fication between liquid and the solid. So this is the first fundamental thing I show you today. The next one question I show you is the fundamental physics of the trouble nano generate. As we know that the, the a metal rod cut electromagnetic flux here, okay? Magnetic flux here give you current, which is the, the, the fundamental principle for electric generator. Everybody knows about this. So our TNG is not based on this principle. It's based on contact gentrification. The media movement in space produce a displacement current. So displacement current is not a general current. Is not a current due to flow charges, but a current producing space due to time varying electric field and medium polarization. So this is why why the electromagnetic wave can transmit in space, right? So we know that. Now the case is this one. We say that our TNG is due to medium motion. So what medium motion? So if you have a media like that, you do have the media move back and forth. So can we quantify the power output of TNG by modifying the, the, the displaced vector? This displaced vector was for static medium. So our first work was to derive a revision form of this displaced vector. So let's first understand what D is. If you look at the Jackson book, D is, this was established more than hundred years ago. The displaced vector is the field that you applied and the medium polarization. If you look at the physical pictures, this one, if you have an applied external field, you have a medium, and this medium has to be polarized against the field so that form a total field, which is an add up of two, okay? But this is called station, it's static. But in our case, is the media is moving. So TNG case is the media sliding one against the other one. That means the boundary condition, boundary are changing. The media distribution are changing here. So if you do this one, you have this, the case we call the, the macro driven polarization. Macro driven is that due to mechanical driving, this media moving back and forth give you another polarization. At this term here, you'll be able to derive the output of the TNG. So if you put that term in the Maxwell equation, you, go, you do have this term here. This term is the displacement current output by TNG here. And we do an experiment. We say we have a few set of arrays and uh, each TNG have a width and, and the, the TNG have a gap. Uh, so what's the best ratio between the width of the TNG and the inter-TNG distance? And that's how to be optimized. 
theoretical calculation say is a they have an optimization. If it's too close, the leakage field is not enough. If it's too separate, too far, the area is not enough. So we have to optimize that. And this prediction here has been verified experimentally, shows that do use this kind of calculation, we'll be able to quantify the, 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 the experiment here. Okay, but think on more, more. Then you say, well, TNG, well, this is slow frequency, this is too low, who cares? But the t frequency can go large. This case was a rotation TNG, dielectric rotate back and forth due to surface charge rotation, give you a displaced current in a space. You see they have power delivery to a few to centimeters away. I uh, use this is a medium motion at a frequency but uh, seven hertz, uh, five, uh, three to five hertz. A small rotation like that is is slow, okay, and give you a power delivery which can load up the lights. This raises new questions. That means what? Medium motion give you electromagnetic wave radiation. So therefore, only cover the displacement current is not enough. We have to cover the electromagnetic wave radiation due to medium motion here. Okay, so this is the first experiment. Second experiment was this one. This was at uh, the uh, done by another group. They show that a MEMS device can be, if you make a TNG to a size of 50 micron, the resonant frequency be a megahertz. If you have the megahertz, you can make a, a larger, longer distance uh, electromagnetic wave radiation. This is interesting. The reason because this motion media can give you wireless signal here. So now let's look at this case here. Then the, for me, I went back to look at the literature. Is this covered in literature? All what I found, most of the textbook did not say the condition on which the Maxwell equation was derived. They just say, here you go, take it. So we don't, most of the students don't know whether Maxwell equation would derive on what conditions, but we know thing for sure. The four equation would derive on the four physics laws. What are the four physics laws? Is Gauss's law for electricity, Gauss's law for magnetism, electromagnetic induction, Faraday method, and Ampere Maxwell induction law here. But you can see this is the magnetic flux. This has to be acting on both the magnetic field and the medium. If you assume the medium is stationary, fixed, if it's fixed and uh, fixed medium, this derivative and the integral can switch. So the space integral and the time integral can switch here because this is time independent. You got this. And you apply the Stokes law on the left hand side, you get this differential equation here. So therefore, the well-known Maxwell equation was derived on the condition station medium. That means all the medium is stationary in an inertial frame. Okay, so this must be very clear. But now the situation is different. What we care is we, we sit in lab, we see all this medium move around, even in accelerations. That means non-inertial frame. All the texts about inertial frame, very few, none of them talk about the this accelerated motions in electrodynamics. So if you look at this one, the see, a simple analogy is that if I sit in this house, what do I see? All this fly, medium flying back and forth, what, do, what signal do I see? So that's the question I try to, to answer as a, as a, from engineering applied physics point of view, okay? So if you look at a traditional way, how, how do they derive? They say physical law based on station medium assumption derive a differential equation. From here, they use Lorentz transformation, can give the field in a moving frame compared to lab frame, use Lorentz form. They said this is standard way. This is good only for if this motion V is a straight line and constant. Means the, that means a constant a straight line motion. That means linear motion. Only no acceleration is the inertial frame. But this treatment becomes so complicated if you have a non-inertial frame, which is the case we care about. So therefore we apply, use the Galileo transformation, consider for engineering application in a non-inertial frame, the, the V here 
can we have acceleration that's time dependent and even space dependent. So we derive this equation here. So therefore, two approaches. One can, for theoretical physics, unify the field in the inertial frame. The other one is solve engineering problem. We care about that. What do we do is right here. So these two are parallel approach, but inconsistent. Why? Because this one is Lorentz in the relativistic space. This is guarding the space for different purposes. Okay. So we we when we look at this one, we have to look at that. This derivative has to apply to the field, the geometry here. That's the key. So apply to here and apply to here. As a result, you get a following. You get this term. So this is the time version magnetic field, the flux, plus the Lorentz force produced circulation is equal to electric field circulation. So you can derive this additional term. This additional is, is, is what we introduce due to medium motion, especially non-uniform motion, okay? Uniform motion. So if you don't have medium motion here, this term is gone, all right? So therefore, all in a vacuum, you don't have medium motion. You, you, you only in the medium, you have this. You two serve at the mid and the boundary here. So that's the, 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 the theory I derived. Then you look at, if you have electromagnetic wave radiation here, you do have, if you do case, you have a leakage of this antenna, all this cell phone signals is several. You have an oscillating voltage that give you also a field here that give you electromagnetic field. But now beside that, you can have all this mechanical move and this shot move, the frequency can be megahertz. In such a case, you do have a, not only electric field oscillation, you have the medium movement oscillation. The, the quantification of the field in space is based on this. And this was derived on two assumptions. Number one, the moving velocity is small. Number two, ignore relative effect. On this two effect, you can derive. Okay, so this is for uh, such an application purposes, we do put the, our expanded uh, displacement vector over here. So this is the full equation here. So for this case, we are care about that. And importantly, this V is not constant, is time dependent, even space dependent. Not like the other theory, they always assume V is constant. Our case is not that case. So be clear about this one uh, before you, 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 you proceed. So this is the important difference here. So what do we, if you write this differently, in, if your V is only time dependent, you should reach the translation approximation, you can derive it in a different form, which is nice to look at here. You can use this one to calculate the displacement current in the TNG and output here. So whole thing can be quantified and can compare with our experiment quantitatively. In the near future, we're gonna use this one to calculate the electromagnetic radiations so we can show how our theory compared to what we know. Some people say, well, you have this one, you may have the, 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 the exceed the speed of light. No. The reason, because this equation was inside the medium. Inside the medium, the speed of light is the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the refresh index. Such as in water, the, the speed of light is one third of the speed of light in the vacuum. So there's no such a thing as exceed, exceed the speed of light. We only consider the macroscopic object on Earth, so that's, the moving speed is very small. So you can use this and quantify the displacement current you observed. You can quantify the, the power voltage output you see in the whole system. Everything can be quantified for that. So let me, I, my time is, is finished. Let me conclude that. So today I mainly talk about uh, the technology introduction by TNG, especially focus on flexible, foldable, fiber-based material TNG that can be used for, for uh, wearable electronics, intelligent fabric, and many other things. So that's the first uh, I talk. The second one focus on two fundamental uh, questions. Number one, what's the principal mechanism of contact unification? Even this phenomenon is known for 2,600 years ago, but this mechanism remained to be discovered. Yeah. Right? So that one, we, that's the second one. The third one, I tried to develop a theory for the TNG, but based on which we can expand more. We try to start to look at the electromagnetic wave radiation from the TNG, which can be applied for other purposes, which we don't know at this point, but we can start a theory anyway. Most importantly, the theory we derive here is 
called Maxwell driven Maxwell equations here, which is for a low speed movement macroscopic object, which also ignore relativity effect. For all the applications we care about on Earth for microscopic object, Galileo transformation is a good approximation. We can ig uh, simply ignore the relative effect. So we can have a good account of our, our, our experiment here. So in any case, so we expand this magnet driven, uh, Maxwell equation for magnet driven media system is three way coupling, mechanical force, electricity and magnetism, which is different from used to be only electricity and magnetism back and forth. So we have three way coupling, multiple field, mechanical force applied plus electricity plus magnet magnetism. Today, this frequency of apply, uh, magnet, electric magnet uh, apply this uh, uh, mechanical force can be high to megahertz. So therefore you can have a radiation for that. Thank you so much for your invitation. And I hope to give you a good uh, uh, introduction what do we do right now. And we'd be more than happy to answer your questions and discuss further. Thank you. Uh, uh, Professor Wang, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Uh, well, I, I'm very interested in this uh, triple voltaic uh, effect. Actually, this is a new effect that have, have never been reported by other groups, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, what is uh, a critical issue for this effect? For example, what is the requirement of the material? or um, what the, Is it necessary to have two semiconductors or just one semiconductor is enough? Uh, you can have a piece of metal sliding on top of one semiconductor, so like, a, like a metal semiconductor contact. This is one case. Then the other case is semiconductor, semiconductor. But semiconductor, if you have a two N type, you probably will not see the effect. You got to be have a P type or N type. So the you either have a short barrier, or you have a PN junction, which help to separate the electrical hole pair generation by this binding time, uh, as, I, as I said. It's a new effect. Uh, it's very universal. You can easily try the, this out in your lab. You get a piece of P-type uh, material, you get a piece of N-type material, put an electron on top of one or the other one. You slide it, you measure the current, you will see. Okay, thank you, Professor Wang. Thank you. Professor Wang, in the um, question, uh, chat box, there is a question for you. Does mm. your formulation need any modification concerning Einstein's theory of reactivity? Definitely, because uh, uh, then you talk about in the relativity is that basically you, you can see the speed moving speed is large, but on the engineering application side, uh, we uh, it's a good approach. Let me tell you why. Let's say 10 times speed of sound is 3.4 kilometer per second. Compare the speed of light, which is uh, 300,000 kilometer per second. So it's very, very small. Let's satisfy that. This is one condition. Number two condition say that the space within which you see your phenomena is much smaller than the, the distance traveled by light within the time of this event happens. So this is most times set on Earth so that the space time point of view and also the, 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 the uh, uh, speed point of view do satisfy, we can safely ignore the effect. But of course, if you go to general case, you have to include the, the relative effect. But we try to make a, a, a approximate theory, we can help us easier get a straightforward answer for our application purpose for that. That's our goal. 